Okay, in this vid okay, in this video, what we're gonna do is continue our deep dive into the 2.0 release for the nano cortex. And if you haven't seen them, I did an uh, initial video just kind of doing a high-level overview. And then I've already done a video looking at the overdrives and the compressors. I'll put links to those in the descriptions. And then today, what I wanted to do was dig into the modulation and utility effects. So I've got my nanocortex hooked up. I've got my app up on my phone so we can control it. You can see that here. Right now, I've got a preset up that's using a capture from Amalgam that's a Tone King Imperial amp. So a nice little Fendery clean amp. So let's go ahead and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and turn off the delay and maybe bring down the reverb just a little bit. So just to kind of bring back the effects so that we don't uh, overpower, you know, what we're trying to hear today with the utility stuff and the modulation. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about the utility stuff. So if we look at the pre the utilities here, we've got a few things here. We've got uh, a couple gates. We've got adaptive gate and utility gate. Those are a little different. The adaptive gate just gives you a noise reduction percentage. If you go to the utility gate, you get threshold attack, hold, release, a lot more features. Um, both of them can only be in the pre-slot, so none of the gates could be post the amp, which frankly is a little disappointing. It'd be nice to be able to have um, a noise gate after the capture in case the capture is introducing some noise to the equation, but I think they behave pretty well. Additionally, you do have um, an input gate up here that you can turn on or off um, and change the percentage. So there's already a built-in gate up front, so you can always use that and not burn up one of your pre-slots with a utility gate. The other utility features that you have is you have three EQ. So you've got a graphic nine, if we look at that. So here, this is your kind of typical you know, nine band. Also, you have a high pass filter and low pass filter built in here. But you know the only thing I would say here is um, this graphic EQ is a little different than maybe some of the classic kind of guitar pedal EQs, uh, specifically around where the mid-range boost is. So this has got that mid-range at 1K, where some of those are at 800. That can make somewhat of a difference as to what kind of tone you're going for, but generally you can kind of accomplish what you want here. Um, you have a low high cut, so slope frequency for both of them, that's really useful, especially I like this after the capture in case you want to shape the sound of a capture maybe that's maybe has a little too much low end or something. And then you do have the parametric three. And so for each of these, you can turn them off. Uh, you could just have one, uh, maybe you say you wanted to boost the 800. So it's only three bands, but this maybe gives you more shaping if you want to hit specific frequencies. You can also, since you've got different types, you can do low pass and high pass here. So you could like boost a mid frequency and then do a high pass filter and low pass filter if you wanted to. The other thing you have is you do have a volume. This isn't something I would necessarily use in a preset unless I had an expression pedal. So you notice here, you can either be logarithmic or linear. So it can change the curve of how the volume works. Um, you know, linear obviously is a straight line. The logarithmic kind of has more of a, a curve to it. Um, so you could hook this to an expression pedal and, and use it that way. So those are the utility features that can go pre. If we go post and go over here, you can see we still have the EQs. The noise gates are gone. So like I said, those can't be post, but they add in a doubler here. And so this is kind of nice. So 
So if you're familiar with how the doubler works on the quad cortex, it's exactly the same. You've got the spread, which is basically what the doubler does is it takes in your mono signal, splits it into stereo, and then the one channel, which is the left channel, gets delayed by a few milliseconds. In this case, it's being delayed by six milliseconds. You can obviously change that if you want to. And like I said, the doubler can only be put post. Um, and then you have our modulation effects. And again, these can only be post. They can actually only go in this post slot. And as you can see here, you've got seven of them. So you've got four choruses, a flanger, a phaser, and a vibe. So this is the chorus that was included in the first version of the nanocortex. So... So if you're familiar with the Boss DC2W, uh, this is working in that way. So you've got all the different modes and then your, your mix and the other controls as well. So like I said, this has been available in the Cortex since its launch. But now we also have the CE2W, which is the straight ahead Boss kind of pedal. And so you've got rate here, you've got depth, you've got different versions of it. So you've got CE2 chorus, CE1 chorus, and then you've got this one, which is a vibrato. So you got a width, if you want to widen that, make it more of a stereo effect. You've got the 229, um, same kind of controls here, rate and depth and width. And then you've got the dream course. So once again, you got speed and depth. And there's two different modes, one and two. So all the courses are exactly the same as they are on the quad cortex. And then we have the MX flanger. We've got a phase. Maybe for this one, we should go more towards a driven tone. Let's go ahead and add in that phaser now. <laughs>
last but not least, you got the vibe. <laughs> So I think a good set of good set of options here for modulation. You know, it is pretty rigid that can only go in this slot. So if you're someone who wants to put like a chorus before the amp, you can't do that here. And um, that's one thing I think the Tonex still has a little bit of a leg up on the nano cortex in terms of the flexibility of where you can place the effects. Um, but, you know, this one, but there's a lot of options here. Like I said, even, even to the point of you can do kind of the, the vibrato kind of thing. So that's your quick one through of the utilities and the modulation effects on the nano cortex. Um, I've got one more video of these. We're going to go through the delays and reverbs in the next video. And I think that will have covered kind of all of the main features that are new in the 2.0 release. So I hope you found this helpful and thanks for watching.